GR Squad. GR Squad. Today we are going to be talking through um, values of ecosystems. So the first thing we look at when we look at ecosystems is why it's important to protect ecosystems, and this is called our values. Mm -hmm. There's five. It's five. It's five. Um, um, the plan today is we're going to just talk through five and have a bit of a chat about it, and then we're going to go through the questions that we gave you on Google Classroom. If you are not in one of our Google Classrooms, we'll read the question out, give you a chance if you want to like pause and have a little question and we'll go through the answer. Just to preview the, the way these questions are often asked in HSC, um, essentially it's one of these dot points where they put an adjective, or, or sorry, a verb, sorry English teachers, a verb before the dot point, turning the dot point into a question. Mm -hmm. And if this is an essay question, which it frequently is, they usually put justify in front of it. And the question will essentially be justify the need for ecosystem management and protection or something like that. Um, when you see that, the justify or the explain or whatever, and you see ecosystem management, it should immediately be a signal to you that you need to start talking about your five ecosystem values. So what, what you're being asked to do is essentially say, why? what's the point of these ecosystems? Why are they worth protecting? And it don't just talk in general, you need to go one, two, three, four, five, the five sub dot points. Yeah, um, another place that comes up often is in the short answer. Um, it's just like a little two marker. Um, outline one reason it's important to uh, protect ecosystems or outline why utility or what the utility value is. Mm. Um, the geofish are in the- Geofish, the don't tap on the tank, That's not, you're not supposed to do that. Ah, they're fine. They around. still haven't got Chilling. names. Chilling. We're voting at the moment. Yeah. Cheeto is winning. Um, Tank Sinatra. <laughs> Tank Sinatra is so good. Whoever thought of Tank Sinatra, you are one of my favourite people. <laughs> if anyone votes against Tank Sinatra, you are dead to me. Okay, um, so let's go through our five. So, also, do you like my new Geo Bunker? This is the, the... I think we... So we have the Geo Bunker at school. We're at, we're at Sammy's house, so... What if we need a new word? Geo home. Geo, geo, no, it needs to be cool. Geo, uh, geo layer. 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 Oh, layer. Geo layer. This All is right. the geo layer. Because I can have the geo deck at my oh, house. Oh, yeah, cool. So we have the geo deck, the geo bunker, and the geo layer. Because this just screams layer. Yeah, and we're in the... <laughs> the fish and the plant. We're in the middle of a forest here. It's like Mordor or something. I don't know. It's <laughs> like, yeah, there's spiders everywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get rid of a few spines. Not, not anymore. It was a, some more teen and unpleasantness. Mm. All right, so yeah. Right, okay. The first reason to protect ecosystems. Yes. Uh, genetic uh, genetic diversity or yes. biodiversity. Yes. Right. Let me see the exact dot point. Okay, bring up the dot point. Um, first one is maintenance of genetic diversity. Maintenance. So we need to protect. And remember which, when we talk about um, biodiversity, we're talking in those those couple of layers, but. It is a maintenance of genetic diversity specifically, mm. not biodiversity, yeah, right. yeah. So this is a crossover with the last dot point a little bit, but we... I think it's okay if they just talk about biodiversity. I think though. so too, yeah. yeah, it's usually fine. Um, but or of course, the genetic diversity is how um, genetically... Uh, I'm trying not to use the word in its own <laughs> how de varied definition. Yeah. How, the genes how varied the genes are of the species. <laughs> so we're, we're talking about within one species. So with how different genetically are all humans from each other, for example. How different from each other are all, you know, one species of fish or, or you know, cheetahs or giraffes or something like that. The more, we, we talked about this in our last video, I think, the more genetically diverse the species, the more likely it is to be able to withstand some stress, some outward in, outside impact to that ecosystem. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So I, I stress this with my students all the time, but the geo dot points aren't, they don't work in isolation. So when you're talking mm -hmm. about reasons to value ecosystems and you talk about genetic diversity, you still need to link it back to resiliency and vulnerability. Definitely. Like, use your terms. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to talk about genetic diversity, what does having genetic diversity mean for an ecosystem? It makes it resilient. Mm. And if we destroy that genetic diversity, it's going to make it vulnerable um, to human and natural stresses. Mm. So make sure you're bringing in all of those terms yeah. when you answer questions. I know I mentioned bananas in our last yeah. um, video. I was actually just looking, uh, reading into that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so there's this, this, uh, this a disease called Panama disease. It's got a scientific name, but it's just known as Panama disease. And there was essentially two types of uh, banana that were most of the ones sold at shops. There was the Gros Michel, which was a French word. This is G-R-O-S, Gros, Gros Michel. Uh, to say with a French no, word, do this. To... Yeah, no. yeah, do that. But, and Panama disease got into that species and globally wiped it out. 
Apparently it was like really tasty, it was like really sweet banana. It was actually, but you might hate bananas because you've never had a grown Michelle. Maybe. So now we're left with a Cavendish banana, it's pretty much the only banana sold worldwide and, and massive cultivated. But Panama disease has now a, a evolved and adapted to attack the, the, the Cavendish banana. Yeah, I don't care, I hate bananas. She, she's <laughs> racist against bananas. Is it's what I'm terrible. All here. Bananas sweet. are fantastic. I like all fruit except blueberries and bananas. Maybe right. it's a bee it's thing. pure racism. <laughs> um, uh, so the, this Panama disease is now found in South America, in uh, North America, in Africa, in a lot of different places. I don't think it's been found in Australia that thing, yet, thankfully. But this is actually a massive threat to the Cavendish banana. We really uh, are at risk of losing bananas, the Cavendish banana, the main banana, worldwide. Mm -hmm. Like just complete, because they're all, they're all clones, there's no genetic diversity. It's a big threat. Scientists are actually oh, working no. on GMO banana. I'm gonna stop being racist. <laughs> Scientists are actually trying to work on um, genetically modified bananas to be able to not be susceptible yeah. to, that, to that disease. Because if it gets into them, it's finished. Mm. Oh, no. So yeah, genetic diversity, very important for a species survival. The more genetically diverse, the more resilient it is to be. Yeah, diverse. really interesting fact from a book here today. Um, the, there's five to 30 million species that currently inhibit the planet. That's a big difference. Mm. Five to 30 it's million. A big, big margin of error. Um, because we don't know all the species that currently exist. Yeah, it's just an estimate. Um, and that... Um, I think the next thing it said in the, in the booklet too was that that whether it be five to thirty million, that's only like that's only like ten percent. Ten percent of all the ones that have existed. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've actually read like because obviously the, if the number is different, it would vary what percentage that is of yeah. the total species ever. So I've seen estimates as high as what's everything that's alive today is represents only one percent of everything that's ever existed. It's crazy. So, but the fact is, the world's so big and so vast that we just don't know how many species there are. So, it's, like, yeah. what you're saying is there could be mermaids. That's, I believe that was a direct quote. Sizio says <laughs> mermaids exist. Excellent. That's it. I think we can rule out unicorns. Oh, I'm not well, ruling really it. Ah, ah, ah. We've got, we've got a rhinoceros. And what's that if not a cow unicorn? Also got a water unicorn in the narwhal. The narwhal. So two, two species of unicorn exist. Why not a horse unicorn? A so horse then the question is, did unicorns evolve from the sea? Or did mm -hmm. narwhals evolve from land unicorns? Wow, this has just blown a whole new way of thinking <laughs> wide open. This is going to go viral, all the scientists. I hope so. The scientists right now are screaming at their <laughs> computers. And hello to the scientists watching Jericho Explain Online. I appreciate your support. All right, number two. Number two is utility value. Utility this value. This one uh, is all of, I was going to say it's my least favourite. I, I like it because it's, it's really easy. It's easy, it's easy, it's easy, it's easy, but it's all about money. Yeah. Protecting the environment so that we can make money. In my experience, if a student remembers just one ecosystem it's value, utility. it's utility value. Yeah. There's another one which I love, love for answers. It's coming up because you can use it for any, every single ecosystem, but we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, so utility Thank value you. is the, the money that we can get from mm. ecosystems. And this comes in like heaps of fashions. It's like yeah. the resources we take, you know, medicine, wood from rainforests. Um, food from from the animals. It's fibers for clothing. Fibers for clothing. It's tourism. Mm. Where we, if we use an ecosystem for tourism, Great Barrier Reef. We start Great Barrier Reef next week. I know it's kind of weird, like week eleven, but it's just how it fits. Again, you remember when we went there? That was so fun, so and we fun. were part of the utility value. I know we, we added, we contributed to the utility value, and um, we became the geography. <laughs> so that's a really big one. The other. Uh, ecosystem that we look at and a lot of schools look at is the intertidal wetlands um, and the mm. intertidal wetlands are really important breeding grounds for a lot of commercial fish mm. so the fishing industry really really relies on healthy intertidal wetlands for their uh for their industry and that was a massive problem over the 20th century because yeah. for a while it wasn't really understood that most species of fish that we eat were bred in estuaries in in, in intertidal wetlands um, for the protection that's offered by the mangroves and stuff. It's much easier to breed than if you're in an open ocean. So because estuaries and intertidal wetlands work like coastal, along rivers, basically where people want to live, the 20th century across the world was a, a period of time where these intertidal wetlands were just being filled in. Because it's, oh, it's just swampland, who cares? Fill it in, put, build some apartments, build a town. And we lost... I can't remember the percentage, but it's like 50% of our entire wetlands over 100 years. 
Um, and then everyone went, oh crap, that's where all the fish breed. That's that's a massive problem, given how much fish we rely on fish. If you look at any ecosystem, mm. it basically feels like a period of humans coming in and just doing whatever they want yeah. and not having any regard for the environment, yeah. not understanding the consequences. Mm. And then more recently, a period of like environmental understanding, environmental yeah. protection. And we'll look at that with entitled wetlands, with yeah. the Ramsar. Yeah. Um, there's the always... Ramsar. There's always like a, a picture of like a movie, but there's always some scientist that goes, oh no, yeah. what have we done? Is I that... just see them more like the Hunter River. Yeah. They got rid of all the trees. We talked about this with Morpeth and mm. the, um, the amount of erosion that happened was insane. It got wider by like four times. Yeah. I could just see them walking in and being like, trees? Yeah, who do you want? farms. What, what's the tree? Get a tree, rid of them. A tree, it, what is a tree if not just a place where a cow could be standing? Exactly. Mm. And then like a decade or two later, Cam Jorgai who went, yeah, oh, no. yeah, that's maybe oh, no. maybe we should I, not. I see what we did. Maybe we should not have done that. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, the Hunter River. Yeah, as as uh, Samantha oh, said, oh, way no. wider, way shallower. What's your name? What's the same? Yeah, well, it's the same amount of water, so that's yeah. a good point. It gets wider, it has to get shallower. Yeah, exactly. Because it's not like we got three times more water. Yeah. Um, okay. Very and, and, our, and our geographers will know what that did to the town of Morpeth or what it contributed to the town of Morpeth. Uh, 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 shout out to shout out to Morpeth. For a little while. Mm. Yeah, that was all good for yeah. um, do you want to do number three for us? Yeah. Intrinsic value. Intrinsic value. Intrinsic. This is my favourite one. They can use every ecosystem. Doesn't matter what it is, it's got intrinsic value. Mm. Intrinsic value is somewhat um, I find this is one of the usually forgotten ones. Um, Environmentalist in me loves it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's basically just that intrinsic value means an ecosystem has value for its own sake. It does not need to justify its existence to humans to be important. In the same way, I said, what's the point of you? Why are you important? It's like, well, I don't have to justify my existence I have to, to prove you. prove myself to you. Oh, I'm important just because I'm important and I exist. And I'm I should... pretty and I exist and therefore you can't yeah, destroy me. Yeah, exactly, Stop exactly. It. So it's not about how much what is in the ecosystem for us. It's not how much money we can make from it. It's literally just that eco all ecosystems should be able to survive just because they should be able to survive. Yeah, so if you ever get a um, source question where it gives you an ecosystem, maybe one you're not familiar with. Always. Interesting value. It's got interesting value. It has life, so therefore it has the right to life. Mm -hmm. However, if we kind of look back um, at how we use ecosystems, I would say that utility value usually wins over Intrinsic oh, value. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, if you get to a, a lovely, a marvellous ecosystem, you go, man, that was, look at that. That's amazing. That's great. Oh, wait, there's coal under it. Dig it up. Yeah. Yeah. Or even tourism. Like, oh, you put tourism here and make millions of dollars. Or we could respect its intrinsic value and mm. leave it. Mm. The utility one. Now, now there, is a, there is a little bit of a crossover there, especially for things like the Barrier Reef, with intrinsic and utility value. Because one of the reasons the Barrier Reef has so much utility value, I remember what we said, $6 billion a year. <laughs> Not 2020 though, just oh, yikes. most other year. Yeah. The situation. The situation. You know what I said on YouTube now? YouTube has been taken off for mentioning it. Actually? It's like a code word now, I can't remember what it is. Okay, words, words, <laughs> you, know, you know what we're talking about. The situation, current, the current situation. So normally in tourism, again, Barrier Reef would earn, would generate $6 billion, mostly in international tourism. And this year, no. It's recovery it's not, though, probably. Yeah, it's but the reason people want to go and see it is, is because of its intrinsic value. You just sit there and look at it and go, look, look at the fish, look at the coral. So cool. This is amazing. Like the pictures do not do it justice. Mm. If you're in Junior School and you're like, should I do geography go to Great Barrier Reef? You definitely should. Like, and I've been scuba diving before. I did it in Fiji mm. and it like did not compare at all to just like snorkeling at the reef was better than scuba diving in Fiji. It was insanely cool. I so never, I've been snorkeling, never in my life had I been scuba diving and, you know, went, like did a little bit of training and stuff like that. When I, it was just the best thing I've ever done. It was just fantastic. I was swimming, this, this is fantastic, great, awesome. So um, one, of the, one of the good things about modern uh, tourism usually is that, um, especially in Australia, the tourism operators know that they need to protect the intrinsic value of the ecosystem to protect their own livelihood. If a tourist operator was to destroy a part of the barrier reef, then no one's going to want to go on their tour to see a destroyed reef. So the intrinsic value and the utility value is tied up together. So there's a, there's a vested interest for that tourist operator to protect the intrinsic value of the reef to maintain their utility value.
Definitely. Mm. Um, all right, the next one. This is one that I find gets skipped over a lot, mm. and um, but it's what I really like. It's heritage value. Heritage value. Um, and heritage value is that like ecosystems, a lot of ecosystems have remained unchanged for tens of thousands, millions of years. Um, and they can tell us a lot about the past mm. as long as they are protected and they're in a state to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so this, it can tell us things about um, the way Indigenous people lived within um, a certain area. I mean, fish hunted, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, my favourite example, though, um, is, and I'll tell you a little secret after this. I haven't told you this before. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm excited now. It's really embarrassing. Oh, yeah. My, my favourite example is in Antarctica. What very Wait, 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 in where? Antarctica. Where? And what do you say? Not Antarctica. 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 Yes, there you go. She got it. In Antarctica, <laughs> um, <laughs> they drill these massive cores, and there's heaps of um, footage of this on YouTube. So just do ice core drilling. Um, massive ice cores. They pull them out, and they're able to. If you look at an ice core, it's actually got rings in it, like the years um, in a tree. Like in a tree, you can see the different seasons of it growing. Um, and you can do the same with an ice core. And so you can count back thousands of years. Because the, the snow that falls never melts, ever. So mm -hmm. it, each year there's a layer of snow that falls, yeah. going back hundreds of thousands of years. Yeah, and it holds the amount of the carbon dioxide that was in the atmosphere the year that that snow fell. Mm -hmm. So it can reconstruct for us the composition of our atmosphere going back, as you said, hundreds of thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Without that data, we would know far less than we currently know about modern climate change. So Definitely. it's crucial. Yeah. Um, if you ever hear someone, by the way, say, oh, we've only been recording temperature changes for 100 years, so how could we know the temperature's really getting warmer? I a, a, they don't know what they're talking about. And B, we've got hundreds of thousands of years of knowing exactly what the temperature was doing in the atmosphere. So we know that what's happening now is very, 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 very different to what has happened throughout history. And we've got a track of the carbon more. dioxide, so we can track yeah. carbon dioxide through time as well. Yep, we track carbon dioxide and temperature and... And, and they're pretty similar. Yeah, it's, yeah they, they, they just follow each other the whole way along. Surprising. I'll show you a graph. Do you want to have a secret now? Please let me know this Antarctica, or however you say it. When so I started so. university, my life goal, and I wrote this down somewhere because I used to write my goals down. Never done that. Was, because you don't have goals or hopes. I... <laughs> well... <laughs> I'll leave that alone. <laughs> um, my goal for life was to get my PhD in geography or geology, I wasn't sure, and go to Antarctica to do study. I didn't even know what it was going to be about. Just study some. Part of it was like penguin. Penguin like, study. It's got nothing to do with. Would you study? That the... was climate. I think I wanted to study climate. Would you study the polar bears if you went there? <sighs> no, because I don't live there. What? And our, our, viewers, our viewers know that. They should. I don't believe yeah, I wouldn't. I would never belittle our viewers. Number five, because this is going really long now. It's all right. We still There's, have questions to get through. Okay. What, what else are they doing right now? Number five, need to allow natural change. To natural change to occur. This, this is essentially the, the evolution one. So we need to let evolution continue on its on its path. Now we we do interfere with that um, in a lot of different ways, but in in general, it is better to allow the, the natural process of evolution to continue rather than stop it. So if you basically wipe out everything in an ecosystem or somehow um, mess with the balance and the, and the food webs and stuff like that, you are essentially having a pretty um, you know, detrimental impact on the, uh, the ecosystem's evolution. Yeah. Cool. Anything you want to add to that really? It's a no, pretty, um, it's yeah. Pretty sure. It's one of those, it's almost like a little intrinsic one mm. as in, but why should we let evolution proceed? No, no, it's because we should. It's, it's a yeah. Good term. I always talk about like the Galapagos Islands, where Charles mm. Darwin went and the finches. Shout out to Charles Darwin, my homeboy. Yeah. Um, C he, C D as, as I called him. <laughs> so he went to the Galapagos, and there was always different islands, and on each island, finches had evolved differently They're because beaks. of what they were. Yeah, what they were able to eat, what was available to them. If humans had gone in and said, man, those uh, finches are mighty tasty and we mm. just killed them all, um, he would never have gone in, never would have studied them, and we may still not know about evolution. Yeah, true enough. It's, so, um, yeah, it's, it, is it was a very, very important um, but, like, discovery. See, I don't really like that analogy now thinking about it because then that still brings it back like it's important for us. So, mm. understand things. it's just important. Yeah, for, like, it's, it's one of those it's, it's ecosystems. Like, yeah. We shouldn't need to get anything out of it. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I always make the link between ecosystem. Uh, 
intrinsic value and yeah. a allow for natural change because why is natural change good it just is for its own sake like we like it, the we don't evolution doesn't need to justify it justify itself to us it's yeah, it's a, in general a good We're thing. part of it, we shouldn't be in charge yeah, of it. Yeah, to, to allow it to continue, yeah. Okay, we're gonna go through questions now. So I'm gonna read the questions. Question time. I'll give you a chance to pause if you wanna go and an answer it. Mm. So this first one is actually from the 2018 HSC. Mm. So it'll be a good one for you to see how we answer this. Yeah. And it is, outline why utility value, so it's given you one. Outline why utility value is a reason to protect ecosystems. If you wanna pause, do it now. And we're back. Um, and if you didn't pause, and that was just really awkward. It's your own fault. Um, why? No one, no one to blame itself. So this one is a two marker. Mm -hmm. Easy, easy two marks. There's two things that I would 100% do, and it's pretty straightforward. Is you need to start by telling us what utility value is, mm -hmm. um, and, and you know explaining why it's important, um, why utility value is important, so why it's important to. Hold on. Low this battery, everybody. Just come up with low battery. We're still good. We're still going. Um, so yeah, what ut problem. utility value is, why it's important to protect ecosystems based on that. And then the last thing they need to do is? Uh, may give an example yeah. of a how or an ecosystem and its, eco in its utility value of yeah. some way. So I'd go directly to Barrier Reef. It's got utility value because of its tourism generation. I'd chuck a stat in there. So you, can't, you, you can never, yeah. no market ever goes, oh, they put in a bit too many stats or fact. Like just more examples, the better. So even in a two marker, utility value, Barrier Reef has utility value because it's tourism and generates around the estimated $6 billion a year. Billion, not million. Make sure you get that so you say utility value is, and you put in your definition what it is. Mm -hmm. um, please don't, um, this is something we always work for our students to get them out of the habit of, don't just say an example of utility value is Great Barrier Reef. No, yeah, that's not Because that's not an example. You it's, haven't, why, yeah, how? It's the tourism. What? Yeah, People you need People traveling to... there and paying money. And think, think it's not just the tourism on the reef, it's like if you go to Cairns and walk around like the main streets of Cairns, like all of the businesses there, yeah. whether it's restaurants, it's motels, it's all because of tourism. So that's when we say it's $6 billion in tourism, it's all the additional money generated by people who go to see it. Yeah. So you'd say utility value is, and then you'd say the Great Barrier Reef holds utility value um, because it contributes $6 billion to the national economy, local economy? Um, I'd say Australian economy. Australian economy. It's, it's, it's mainly Queensland, yeah. but yeah. Australian economy. Australian economy. Mm -hmm. Okay, two marks, done. Two, easy. Okay, question the two. next question. Mm -hmm. um, describe an ecosystem with heritage value. I got some great answers for this one. Some have talked about the Tarkine in Tasmania, Tarkine rainforest and how they're still untouched. Good. Um, we've got old, Antarctica. Old growth forest. Yeah, yeah. Gondwanic. Got you. Old growth forests. Some about Antarctica. Antarctica. Um, some about the Great Barrier Reef. Mm -hmm. Is another one you could talk about? Great Barrier Reef holds all of them. Yeah. And we'll talk about when we get to Great Barrier Reef. Yeah. Um, describe means key features and characteristics. Yeah. And you just need to describe an ecosystem straight away means example. So mm -hmm. tell us an ecosystem um, where it is. So if you're going to say Tarkane Forest, the Tarkane Forest is a Guadalcanal old growth forest in Tasmania. It holds heritage value because. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and reef, you can talk about in, um, oh, indigenous, well, a number of indigenous tribes over the, over the past you know, tens of thousands of years, or well, really very reef in its current state, about eight to 12,000 years old. So if, for most of that time, indigenous peoples were using it for hunting and fishing and, and uh, using shells and uh, for like materials for you know, hunting and stuff like that. So you can, you can chuck all that stuff in as why it's for heritage value. All right, this next question, and I, we've got to give you a break that time. We'll give you a break this time. Right. Uh, well, you can't... You, you, you can take a pause. It's a pause. Well. That's true. Yeah. Um, this one, you can't actually Google. That's why I put it in there. Ungoogleable. Think about it, the ungoogleable question. Imagine that question. You can't Google. Um, what would happen if intrinsic value was taken to the extreme? So pause now if you yeah, want to have a go. It's a great question. Pause, and we're back. Um, do you want to have a go at answering that? Why... What would happen if intrinsic value was taken to the extreme? Okay, so intrins if intrinsic value were taken to the extreme, we'd be talking about um, uh, the concept of preservation. So essentially, if, e if intrinsic value was really our primary value and we wanted to, to maintain it no matter what, we would essentially ban everyone from every ecosystem and not yeah. let anything ever be done to an ecosystem. 
even if it had a high amount of uh, intrinsic value, so people wanted to go see it and were willing to pay money to see it, and therefore it could have utility, you go, no, 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 no. We need to protect it at all costs. We need to make sure nothing bad ever happens to it, which includes humans using it for any purpose. Um, if this was a HSC question, which it wouldn't be. Yeah, it's a weird one. We'd start by saying what utility, not utility, intrinsic, uh, intrinsic value is. Mm -hmm. Then we talk about that. The one thing I added on, because that was a response I got from my students, the one thing I added on is it would also have a huge impact on how our society functions. Because mm. as we've said, we get a lot from ecosystems. So we wouldn't be able to take medicines from rainforests. Yeah. Anymore. We wouldn't be able to take fibres and wood and Cold food. For Cold for electricity, yeah. Um, so our society as a whole. How would they have built my solar panels? On that note, yeah. I think we're done. I'm going to try and hit stop before we get to solar panels out. Uh, well, I won't.